For today's video we're going to take a look at the Canon Repeat Coder L. If you ignore the section on the right here, it's more or less like any other tape recorder. You've got a record button, rewind, fast forward, play and stop. It uses standard compact cassettes, just like any other tape recorder. You've got um, a record volume knob along with a record level indicator, a tone knob and a volume knob. On the front there are sockets uh, for a remote microphone, an auxiliary output to connect it to your hi-fi and an earphone. It can run off 240 volts AC or you can use six C cell batteries in the back here. Where it differs from other tape recorders is with the repeat button here. At any time when the normal cassette is playing, the audio is recorded onto a loop cassette on the right. When you press the repeat button, the audio cassette stops and the loop cassette starts playing over and over again. The loop cassettes were available in many different lengths. I'll let the unit itself tell you about that. The repeat is determined by the choice of the second cassette, which is available in 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 25, 30, 60 and 90 second loops. The repeat cord was intended primarily as a teaching or learning machine, great for learning languages, or practicing for a speech, or even learning that difficult passage on a musical instrument. It was even marketed for dictation work, but I think dictation machines were already fairly well sorted. You'll see more of those in other videos. Anyway, I'll just quickly swap the tape out. My particular machine would have originally been supplied with a Linguaphone language course. You would receive a set of tapes where the teacher would read out a phrase and then the student would try to say it themselves. The repeat function would greatly assist because you wouldn't have to keep stopping the tape and rewinding it to try and hear the phrase again. I won't embarrass myself by trying to speak a foreign language, but imagine if I was teaching someone English. I could read out a phrase and then they could hit the repeat button and hear the phrase over and over again to try and practice it. For instance, Help! My trousers are on fire. Do you have a fire extinguisher? Help! My trousers are on fire. Do you have a fire extinguisher? Help! My trousers are on fire. Do you have a fire extinguisher? Help! My trousers are on fire. Do you have a fire extinguisher? And I think you get the idea of how it works. As an additional feature, the loop tape has two tracks. Track 1 is recorded directly from the master tape, leaving track 2 for you to record using the microphone. Help! My trousers are on fire. Do you have a fire extinguisher? Help! Help. My, My trousers, trousers are on fire. Do you have a fire extinguisher? Help! My trousers are on fire. Do you have a fire extinguisher? Help! My trousers are on fire. Do you have a fire extinguisher? I'm not sure how much help that feature would have been, because all you get is a jumbled mess of both voices together. Maybe if you had one of the longer repeat cassettes, you could record your version after the teacher had finished their bit, and that way you could compare the two back to back rather than at the same time. Another little problem with the second track on the loop tape is that it doesn't get erased when you record a new loop. So it ends up sounding something like this. Is that it doesn't get erased when you record a new loop. Do you have a fire extinguisher? To cure this you have to turn the record volume back to naught, play the loop again and record a blank track on track 2. So it ends up sounding something like this. Is that it doesn't get erased when you record a new loop. So it ends up sounding something like this. The loop tape, which is an endless loop, winds onto the outside of the spool and then is drawn off from the middle, as you can sort of see on this bit of footage.
When you don't need it, the repeat cassette simply pulls out of the side of the machine. Like this. And plugs back in again, thusly. The loop tape itself is running the entire time that the main tape is playing, which will put quite a lot of wear on the loop tape if you don't need it. So when you're not using the loop tape, you should either extract it to that position, or take it out completely so you don't put wear and tear on the loop tape. My repeat cord was made somewhere around 1971, which tallies with the date on the documentation that came with it. When I received it, there had been foam rubber in the bottom of the case to stop the accessories rattling around. This had decomposed into some black goop that had ended up on everything. It was on the microphone, on the leads, all over the case, so that took quite a long time to clear off. Once that was cleaned, the only other problem I've got is that at the moment, rewind doesn't really work properly. Fast forwards is OK, plays fine, but rewind the belt slipping. So we'll take a look at that in a bit when we open the unit up. The repeat cutter comes in a nice little case. You can remove the top like this, but the bottom actually forms part of the case of the unit. So when you take the screws out, you expose all the exciting bits. So that's what we'll do next. Removing the six screws that hold the case together, gives you access to the electronics inside. And you immediately realise it's actually quite an old unit that really isn't modern circuitry in there. I quite like over here where there's been a track cut on the board and rerouted. Presumably they made a mistake when they etched the original set of boards for these. You've got the drive for the repeat tape here and the drive for the main tape over here, this is the belt that's a bit soft and stretched, we'll deal with that later. Drive motor here, power supply here. The batteries would be contained in this area here. The stretchy drive belt that isn't gripping very well, I probably need a new drive belt for it, but I'm going to do a bit of a fudge trick. I'm going to take it off carefully or at least as much as I can, and I'll carefully slice a little bit out of it and glue it back together, and that might well do the trick for now. Right, that's a little bit of the belt cut out, as you can see here. We've now got better tension on the belt itself. So, all that remains is to put it back together and see if it'll now rewind properly. So, moment of truth. Will it rewind? Perfect. So this has been a demonstration of the Canon Repeat Coder L from around 1971. If you like what you've seen, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more vintage stuff coming soon. Thanks for watching, and bye for now. Thanks for watching, and bye for now. Thanks for watching, and bye for now. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.